Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, uh, back with some Commodore 64 boards. Um, now, I am not sure the way this video is going to go yet. Like, are we going to end with a working board, two working boards, no working boards? Is it going to be one part, two part, three parts? I don't know. But anyway, these are some boards I bought from eBay. So, yeah, first inspection. Look at this here. Piece of shield, and isn't that a thing? Some of these had like a, some of the US ones in particular had a giant shield that was soldered on at various points. That's what I guess that is. I've never seen that actually. I may have done back in the day, but yeah, you can see the solder point there. So that's uh, strange. Very rusted modular, like the one we saw in previous repair. Uh, look, there's loads of corrosion there, so that would have to come off at some point, I think. Solder on top of the carts thing there. Some solder or something here, look. Those have been squished. That's weird. Is that solder? I think it is. Uh, a three amp, <laughs> three amp mains fuse here, look. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's got to come out. Um, we've got a cap missing down here. We've got the power switch missing there. Uh, and obviously all the main chips are missing but in general that one is largely intact actually and some greenness looking there to those pins but you know what that might be a good candidate uh, to get up and running I think yeah the can on that is a bit bashed you know if we fit four sockets on here I could get some of my working uh, chips and test this one relatively quickly well, if we get a power switch on, but I do have a switch, I think, somewhere from when I salvaged uh, an old C64 that was way past its, uh, you know, expiry date. Then we've got this, which is a C64C. Um, yeah, so some of these I've just reclaimed because I'm like, well, I see some value in some of the parts. This might be just a parts one. So, you know, the connector on this one here is nice and clean. But this one has lost everything. It's lost everything here, the port, the power, the, in, uh, what's his name, the filter, uh, all of the small stuff, AEMI components, uh, keyboard, key. it's lost everything. <laughs> There's literally nothing left on it. So I think with this one, I'll strip this. I think we we'll take the parts off here. Um, it's got the uh, PLA that has the separate RAM. Yeah, it's kind of desirable, though. actually. I don't have a spare of one of those ones, I don't think. Because, you know, when the RAM fails, yeah, it's not a problem, you swap it out. But these are pretty robust, these sharp PLAs. Uh, and then we've got basic and kernel over here. Of course, there could be a fault somewhere here. Um, but I may be able to test some of these on another C64 C board. But I think, yeah, this one's going to be a parts board. There's far too many things, including the ports here. And every single passive, all the capacitors and everything, there's so much missing off that one. It certainly will be interesting to look at what's going on here. Yeah, and that's been socketed, look. I thought that was already socketed, so I don't know, there's some strange things going on on that one. Yeah, that's parts then, definitely, so we're getting nearer to understanding that. Wow, that's like a total rust bucket, that, isn't it? That modulator, good God, no wonder this one was scrapped. So it's the same sort of thing again, the power switch is missing. You can buy replacement power switches, so that's a bit strange, really. Um, yeah, but then everything else here is okay. Obviously, we're missing all the chips again, the main chips. And as we scroll around, yeah, there's no damage here as such, I don't think. I think it's just solder. So we can get sockets there. The RAM's missing on this one. Someone's, uh, you know, used the RAM from this to fix another. Some of these caps' legs are a bit mangled, look. They need straightening out a little. But again, I think this one could be uh, a worker, despite the fact someone's left the CIA on there. Does that mean this has got a faulty CIA? I don't know. I think I might start with this one, just based on the fact... Oh, mind you, it's got all the RAM missing. Yeah, well, I can get sockets on there. We can backfill that. I've got some of those MT RAMs that um, I got from William. Yeah, you shouldn't use those, but just for me testing and stuff and just getting board up and running, I will stick one in a socket. Uh, I've got no uh, problems with that. Because if they do fail, you can just pull it out of the socket and stick something better in. Um... I like to try and just use what I've got, really, rather than just waste things. So, yeah, I think I'll start with this one. We'll clean up, you know, some green and see, look at that. We'll clean up with cotton buds first of all, and then I'll uh, start gradually, one by one, you know, working around the air with a bit of braid and some of uh, the solder pump stuff. Get a socket, 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 socket. Start with a ram, maybe. Uh, we'll do the... I'm not going to do that straight away. We'll do the ram. Get those uh, two sockets, I think. I forget whether this is the one where that's the SID. So since I'm going to be starting down here, let's clean down here first. So we've got a pad missing on the top, it doesn't go anywhere. And there may be some pad damage around these. 
most of the desolder work seems to have been pretty good but you know like that one there I don't know it's looking a bit questionable yeah I'll do this bottom half I'll do that that one next after I've done this but initially it's going to do that and I'm going to inspect with magnification and see if there's any anything of concern there before I fit sockets yeah so other than that pad that you can see is clearly missing there there's just a, a lot of solder there and that's it really a bit too much there so yeah I can just use the desolder pump with the solder iron in fact so let's do that now let's just uh, heat those particular points and remove the excess and just make the socket go on a wee bit easier he says yeah there we go that's flat that one there is just a wee bit more solder than I would like That's it, so I'll get four sockets and we'll get those on. This is going to be pretty easy, this. It's going to be pretty quick, this, in terms of getting these things on to be able to test it. It's the, that's the nice thing. The removal is the thing that takes the time, and someone's already done that. So apologies if you know some of this stuff, but I thought I'd point some things out as I go along, because there's things I don't always point out. Uh, if you count the pins on one side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a 16-pin dip socket, or dill. If you, because I sometimes have people saying, what's that socket? How do I get the sockets? What are they? So it's a dip or dill 16 pin socket. The size can be an issue. You know, the pitch here between the pins, the gap between the pins is 2.54. Yeah. But it, you'll be able to tell from a photo whether it looks right or not generally. Um, you know, because you can get, the, you know, these wider chips here. It, that's like, is it 26 or 28 pin? Well, you can get these long, thin ones in the same size, but they're not as wide. But you'll be able to tell that from looking at the photo on the advert. Um, but yeah, you can just buy sockets like this from eBay, dead cheap. You know, they'll cost you pennies each, really. Um, although they are more expensive than they used to be. They were literally pennies in the past. They're probably not now. Probably about 10 or 20 pence, 50 pence each. So yeah, but socket is your friend. Because if you don't know whether your chip is any good, you can swap it easily. You've not committed to soldering it straight on the board. Uh, yeah, so just solder a couple of points. Yep. Yeah. Press it as you, you know, from the inside upwards as you solder. And flip over, just make sure it's nice and straight. Because if it's not straight, it might bug you. It bugs me when they're not straight. And uh, yeah, just uh, doing that could uh, avoid that scenario whereby you feel like you can take it off. I'm just going to bend this leg of this cap here upwards carefully a little bit. If I can like that. There we go. Just to get that off the board because those legs were a bit close and these ones here I'm just going to straighten up somewhat a little bit. Uh, these caps will fracture really easy. You know the ceramic, the, this coating here will break off around the legs or around the top if the too manhandled but yeah you can just move those around make sure there's no shorts this one down here is a bit flat but that should be all right uh the others look all right but obviously we'll test we'll check that before we come to power it on you just want to make sure you're not got any shorts anywhere so I'll anchor the next ones on once they're all anchored i'll then just commit to soldering all of the points always inspect your pins before you start and if you get any resistance pushing them in, sometimes these uh, socket pins can come out as you push it in and you don't notice and then you come to solder and you've got one stuck out a bit. So do check before you commit to soldering all of the remaining pins, but you can see those are going through really easily. And just rinse repeat, that needs a bit of adjustment, it's not quite straight. Right, they're looking pretty straight. Uh, I, I guess I didn't point out. You can see on the uh, silhouette here on the silk screen. See, there's a little semicircle at the top, and it's the same with these ones. That's pin one. And on these sockets, you've got a little uh, semicircle just etched into the top there. So you always want to align that that way, so that anybody who knows that sees this socket, sees the little semicircle at the top there, and goes, ah, oh, that's the where pin one goes. You know, pin one goes up here on each of these and it's the same with every single dip or dill socket you'll always see this little thing here that indicates pin one and pin is, one is always this side here next to that little semicircle so yeah anyway we'll flip that over solder those on and, uh, and then do the next bank but that's taking just a minute just to get those it'll take another minute to solder them so it'll be a few more minutes for that i'll jump cut to having done that bit then and then the other thing we need to do before we test is just socket this up actually and then we can start to uh, get everything on there go test it
it goes without saying as well inspect the underside of a board before you commit to doing something like this um, you know st do your inspections right at the start work out where all the damage is before you consider trying to save something like this because uh, yeah you just set your expectations you know exactly what's required and uh, work out whether it is actually achievable something like this may have just been stripped in order to repair other C64s it could be someone's had no choice you know they're doing it at the business they try and sell the chips to make more money um, but it also could be because someone wanted to build a um, you know the new boards you could replace this board with a brand new modern PCB but why would you want to do that I can understand if you've got a, a totally balked board but I certainly wouldn't be taking chips off uh, well this is me I wouldn't be taking chips off a functioning board just to make some new fancy you know, uh, good looking modern PCB when this is an actual Commodore one this is always going to have more value in in future to somebody somebody who wants an original Commodore board not, you know, something bought from PCB Way or some other PCB fab <sighs> using the original chips it's interesting we seem to be getting to that disposable mindset don't we where we're like oh let's just throw away that old Commodore board there's a few corroded traces on it let's just use a brand new one with some new ch you know chips off the original board and it's just the same well it technically it is and it runs just the same but it may even have a few enhancements but it isn't the same thing it is not the same thing right I think that's it one two three four yeah so that's that obviously I need to clean around there and inspect but I'll jump to having done that one right that's those sockets all on I'm now going to clean up here actually it looks mostly flux here from what I can see I don't really see any pad damage it just looks really dirty and uh, fluxed around there obviously be very careful with the cotton bud on something like this because if you just get a pad there that's uh, sort of lifted a little bit or it's torn a little bit and you could hook onto it and pull it off completely there could be some damage there and check that um, and likewise the solder sharp edges you'll attach to it and you'll pull it off now I appreciate the irony here that somebody out there and a few people more than one are stripping boards like this for parts and selling the parts yeah and I'm buying the boards they're selling and probably the parts they're selling <laughs> and sticking them back on the board so it's like we, could, we may as well just cut out the public and we may as well just uh, contact me we'll just do a thing between us you take all the chips off sell me the board and then sell me the chips back but then the problem there is you need to promise that you're not going to buy the board back again when I stick it on eBay or I'm just going to end up homeless yeah so they're all largely unblocked apart from here which I suspect them be a ground or something might not be. I think I need to get some uh, oil or something to my pump because it ain't sucking very fast. And that top left one there just needs uh, a wee bit of an extraction as well. And then I'll just inspect with magnification and just make sure. You see that one there, that pad? It looks like it's not even a pad there to be honest. Yeah, we'll just inspect with magnification and then get a socket on. Right, so on the CPU sock, oh, we have some damage. You can see this is the pin I was suspecting a minute ago. Let's just uh, just press into that. Anywhere the pads are all squished in, if you just squeeze in a little bit, make sure you don't pull it out, you know, pull the pad off. It's here. It's this trace here. So I've scratched a bit there, scratched a bit here. I'm going to use a piece of coil wire. I'm assuming it doesn't go up there because this wouldn't go anywhere. That wouldn't make any sense. So it, it goes here. I think this has been squished up a bit. So I'll have a coil wire from there to there. Stick some uh, solder mask or uh, nail polish probably. Um, there's one over here somewhere, I can't see it now. Yeah, it's there. So again, I scratched a bit there, I scratched a bit there, I'm going to join a piece of coil wire there, and again, put some nail polish on it. And there's another one up here somewhere, uh, I don't know where it is now. Uh, anyway, I will fix those, and I'll report back. Right, so I fixed that one with some coil wire. That one there was lifted and broken, and I put it back down, laid it down, and put some solder over it, so that one didn't even need a wire. This one down here, piece of coil wire over there, uh, I think that's it. So yeah, these are one or two of these, as I say, they're not spherical, so just a little press, um, the, the gaps are sufficient though, I've checked there's no solder blocking, but we should be able to get a socket on there now, not even going to put any nail polish over those, they're going to be fine as they are, and I've tested connectivity from the, the side over there to the side over here on each of those. If you saw the Ziff uh, 64 video I did, 
this socket came off there, so I think it was someone had fitted it on that board for CIA. So yeah, I've got that on there, I've gone through the holes fine. No damage on this side, obviously do thoroughly inspect both sides. But yeah, I'll do exactly the same thing. So I'll couple, press it, make sure all the pins are through the holes. And when it's nice and straight, then just solder it on. Right, so we're almost at the point to be able to test. So you're thinking, how did you know that was the SID socket, not this? Well, I was looking at that going, where's the caps, the filter caps? And I'll see two caps that kind of look the same. And then I was like, ah, oh, down, they're down here, look. They're down here, and they're gonna connect to those pins there. I can test that on connectivity, yeah? Because you have the two filter caps, and I think the top left on the SID here is like, those two pins and those two pins are these caps. So if we were to go from there to there, look, sure and then miss one, because that's going to be that side probably, yeah. And then this one's going to be uh, that side, and this one's going to be that side. There you go, that's a SID socket. That is a SID socket. So I need to do the same thing here. It looks like there's no pad damage there, I think. So just clean up there and get the socket on. I'll just jump to that being fitted. So you can see a PLA socket there. Looking at it this way, you can see some different pins. I actually, re again, reclaimed this from one of those other boards where we repaired it and we swapped the socket for a ZIF socket, I think. I think that was uh, one of those. So I replaced those pins entirely. One of the pins looks a bit dark there, but this went through the ultrasonic and I uh, took out every single pin and retention them. That is good as new. So yeah, that'll be perfect. So the final thing we're missing here now is, I think, is the power switch. We should then be able to get the chips in and test it. Now before I get the chips in, I'll be measuring voltages, but let's get a power switch on there and then we can whiz over to the uh, box and uh, do some checks and stuff and start to introduce the chips. So when I come to fit that CIA, I'm going to fit uh, another reclaimed socket. So again, this came from a C64 board. It's single wipe this one, but the pins were all retention, so that'll do for the CIA later. And in my component trays, I found this. Can you see that? It looks brand new. Absolutely brand new because it came off a C64C board. It was that one that was uh, totally destroyed. That's where the ports and things like that came from. So yeah, we can get uh, that on there. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a pad there. I must have uh, removed one of the pads when I pulled that off. But I mean, I was quite careful when I did that uh, removal. Most of that board was all right, but it was so badly damaged. You know, there were so many uh, burned and torn up traces and stuff on it. It really wasn't worth, so there's another one there, another bit through a hole up. It really wasn't worth trying to save that one. I will always try and save uh, pretty much anything, you know that, that's what I do on my channel. Most people are like, ah, oh, put that in the bin, use that one for spares, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'll repair that. So another one of these where someone's lost the pads on this side, look, that one's missing, that, I think that one might be missing, I'm not sure. But anyway, we can secure them from the other side, you know, so you can actually solder from the other side. That padlock is bent right over here, I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, let's just try and get it on, and then we'll, uh, yeah, there is a bit of a pad there. May as well do that whilst it's not in place. It just makes it a bit easier, and we'll get a cleaner solder point and all the rest of it. Pads on this side, though, well, good luck. We'll be giving the board a thorough clean-up if we can get it working. Well, we will get it working, you know what I'm like. I'm determined it will work. This will live. So the hard bit now is trying to hold it and just add uh, a bit of solder to a few points here and then inspect from the other side and refloat if needed. Yeah, so a little bit there like that just to hold it and I'll link it here. A lot more there and I'll just press it from the other side. You can see how long that stayed molten there, it's because it's obviously a really beefy connection. There we go, just reflow that one again. Right, that's nice and flat and in place. Let's just add a load more there. Let's do that middle one. And then I'm just going to inspect it to make sure it's still flat. Yeah, it's still flat. It's in place, so I can commit to these middle ones. Uh, so I can commit to the middle one over here. Quite a large, beefy blob of solder. A bit more on that one.
Now this one here may bite on this side. Yeah, there's a little bit. Look, there's half a pad there, so that's not too bad. Again, had lots of solder, but this one is going to do nothing. So I'm going to have to solder that from the other side. It might not matter. That might be the off position. But again, I'm just going to add more to these because I want it to flow through down the leg and hopefully onto the good six pads on the other side. And you might just be able to see that the solder has flowed on all those pins there. But not so much, well, none on this first one. It doesn't do anything, but it, it's anchored there, look. So, but hardly any solder on this first one. So let's uh, not avoid touching this. Just come in at an angle and solder here. Because we just want it to be anchored, don't we, like that? There we go. That'll do. It's got a nice uh, amount of solder there. And that second one, you can see, it, whilst it's joined on the other side and it is coming up here, there's no solder here. So again, we'll just carefully get into that. Add some solder to that point. Might take some time just to get up to temperature of the angle amount. There we go. You can see it bubbling away there. So we've got some uh, good solder points there on both sides. So that's our power switch on. Let's go and give it a power up and see what's going on. So technically there's no point in video, but I've connected up anyway. Connect up power. It's using Black 5 volt saver. I've got the multimeter set to DC, and let's just switch this on. I'm not going to see anything. Well, hopefully, unless something was, uh, you know, like burning up or something like that. Just testing the main chips there, nice and cold. So we'll measure, we'll measure the five volts uh, on these chips first, because that's going to be the thing that, if anything on this board, that's going to be the issue. 5.14, you can see that, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, because what I mean is, someone's left all this stuff on here, it stands to reason one of these might be the faults, and you might have a short, it might be pulling the 5 volt down, well, the 5 volt is there. So, as per previous videos, that's the 12 volts there, on the uh, pin 3 there, to go to the VIC and the SID, and uh, just about, we can see here, this should be 5 volts for the VIC, for the CAN, and we have 5 volts there as well, yeah? So, everything's okay in terms of the power coming in. So the wrist strap is on again, ESD wrist strap. Whenever you're handling the board, uh, C64, you really need to uh, you know, take ESD precautions. So yeah, that'll just make sure I don't have a static charge that could kill the board. So one by one, I'm gonna take some of these chips out of this um, Ziff 64 here, just because they're easily conveniently nearby. Uh, I've got my special socket here. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've covered that before. It's a socket that's already been, you know, had turn pins in it. Yeah, so we'll stick that on there, like that. Because then when we stick these uh, pins into here, it's not going to widen them. That's a PLA in. I disconnected the power, by the way. For the moment, we'll leave the SID off, but we do need a CPU, 6510. So let's carefully get that in as well. Now let me think, what else do we need now? That is actually technically enough with the dead test. So oh, we need a VIC. So let's borrow the Rev1 VIC from here. Pin one is at the top here, so uh, yeah, it's a single wipe socket, you never know, that could be a source of a bad connection there, but right, that's going in, that's the VIC in, so uh, yeah, we just need the RAM now, but as I say, with a dead test cart, you could just plug a dead test in, it should give you a RAM fault, and so then you're like, ah, oh, okay, maybe it's just the RAM, that's the only issue, but I've got RAM, so let's stick RAM in. So again, wrist strap on, uh, there's the RAM from the previous video, isn't there, so this is uh, M2, one, two, three four five six so yeah we used two ram chips to fix the previous two c64 videos you'll have seen recently so we need two more so i'm going to use those mt ones uh, yeah i know what you're thinking mt it's unreliable you should just throw it away but these work why would you throw something away that works especially when it's socketed i'm not soldering these on if uh, someone had a ram fault they could just swap the chips over i suspect these are the same thing actually uh, anyway, I'll just keep looking, I'll report back in a sec. Yeah, I've got some 4164s there, those will do. Um, and technically these ones, oh that's a 256, hang on. Yeah, so that's a KSERA 4164, so we'll use that. And let's see if we've got another KSERA one somewhere here, yeah we have. KM4164, let's take that one there from the edge. So we've got eight chips, yeah, eight chips there. So let's go with those. So place your bets, what do you think? Do you think there's going to be another issue? Obviously going to be missing the cursor in terms of basic coming up there, I think. Or is that the one with the keyboard? I can't quite remember. I think it is. I think that'll be a flashing cursor, that one. Um, but will it work at all? 
will we have another false? I really want another false. I'd love to have a false somewhere around here. Not these. I'm sick of seeing those being faulty. I'd like to see a faulty uh, 373 actually. It's about time we got to one of those. Yeah, you know, I had these things back in the day, that sort of fault, you know, this is the thing. These days you just seem to see an awful lot of PLAs and an awful lot of RAM. It kind of makes picking up C64s to repair a bit of a boring uh, thing, really. Because they're just so samey in the faults recently. Well, for me they are. There we go, that's all the RAM in. So, pin one, pin one. Pin one, pin one. Yep, all at the top. We've got everything there now, bar the SID and one CIA. Woohoo, we got a black screen. Ha <laughs> ha! We do have a fault. We've got a black screen. So, that is a good sign. I think what I need to do now is boot the uh, dead test car, actually, just to see if it's saying the RAM's an issue, because it could just be one of those 257s actually, that might be the issue with this and why someone couldn't fix it and decided to use it for parts. So we'll just test it with the dead test. The benefit of this is it will test when the, all of the RAM is bad. The other diagnostics cartridge needs the RAM. Right, with the dead test car, we are getting some flashes. So yeah, it does look like maybe 257, whole logic probe that, we'll do that together. But it could just be one of those RAMs is not right. Oh, maybe a damaged trace I didn't spot. So let's just try and count that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's five flashes. I'll show you the table. So according to that table, it's U10. So let's switch this off. Uh, where's U10? U10's that one, isn't it? Maybe there was some damage there that... I can't remember, did I fix some damage around one of these tracers? Let me just go and get my extractor. That's U21, yeah, it's got to be this one. It's got to be this one here, U10. Uh, so let's just pull that out. There we go. Swap it over for another chip, just in case it's that I see. So I've got some of those uh, Kaya Sear ones here, 4164 again. Yeah, those have come off a board previously. Maybe one or two of these are bad, I don't know. Let's uh, carefully get that in. And try it again. It's got to be two five sevens. This isn't it. Let's just count those again. One, two, three, four, five. Same thing. So I think actually what we'll do is switch it off. Put the meat on continuity. Let's just make sure that we've not got a cut trace somewhere in relation to uh, U10. Uh, so for example, I think other than the data in, data out, they should all be more or less joined up. That might be. That might be one of them actually. I think it's like pin one and pin two or something. These are not joined up, are they? How are they not joined up? Let's go third pin down. Yeah, look, third, 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 fourth, 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 fourth. So we're just missing the first two pins at the moment. I think that's data in, data out, if memory serves. Often they join together the first two pins, actually. Um, did I miss a pin there? I'm not sure. Let's just. You can test all the way along because if this one didn't reach that one, it's because it's cut in the middle. So in theory, you don't even need to go across each one like that. You can just, you know, go all the way. You can just uh, go along and down like that with the outer ones. Maybe between the banks if you were not getting anywhere. So like that side there. Let's just see if these are joined. No, they're not, are they? That's interesting. I suspect the top one is an address bit that's unused and then you've got the data bits and the data bits are all going to be separate which is why the first two pins aren't joined up. Anyway, let's just test the other side just to make sure we're getting continuity all the way along. That third one we're not. Which could be correct. I'll check that in a sec and see what that third one is. Yeah, so the third one. Let's just check the third one on this bank here. No, it's not joined up there either. So, continuity all the way along. Oh, we haven't got one. Oh, yes, we have. We've got one there. You know, you're looking at address bits primarily down that side. So, I don't see any immediate connectivity issues. I'm thinking here. So, let's get the logic probe on. Let's see if we see any weirdness on the connection that relates to this one here. So, the ground is easy to clip on down here on the logic probe. I need a 5 volts. 
Uh, let's check this fur right here because wasn't it one round here before? Yeah, that's a dead short. So it's the same as that ex that other board in a previous uh, video, like the last last one I think, or the one before. So we can clip that there. Be mindful when it flips over like that, it could short. So just look where it is and what it, potential it has to short onto anything. I'm gonna switch it on. It's doing the memory test, obviously. Let's just uh, check we have a uh, functioning probe. Yeah, we do. We've got a uh, green there, means uh, low, logic low. And let's just have a look uh, around here. So we've got VCC. God, there's nothing much going on there. That's like low with hardly any red. Red, but hardly any green. Yeah, so we're getting pulse in there, look in sync. So anyway, let's go keep going down. I appreciate I'm going in random order here. Pulsing, just got the one above, pulsing, pulsing. Uh, that's high, there's hardly any low there. Nothing's hot here. Yeah, that's high, not very low. Pulsing. So that one, straight away, I have a few concerns about because it's, it doesn't really look. Mind you, the test is going to be. There's nothing on this one. Yeah, that one's low. That's high. Hmm. Let's try it without the diagnostics carting because it may just be confusing matters the fact it's going round and round and round the tester. The way I've tended to work with these is just to do it when it's uh, booting from, or trying to be from the kernel. Um, now it may have halted at that point, but anyway, that's the power. So we've got low, high, pulsing, 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 pulsing. Again, really bad connections there. I think I need to get the fiberglass pen to that. So I haven't scoped anything here, but just in relation to the RAM connectivity, because obviously, you know, this was off the board, that was off the board, it could be a broken trace somewhere, and it could it be one of the ones I missed under here. So, just testing connectivity again, pin 2, this is the uh, data in, data out pin on each of these uh, DRAM chips here. Pin 1 I think is just unused, as I say. Um, if we measure down here on connectivity, we've got to join, yeah? This is the chip that the dead test saying doesn't work, again we just uh, swipe down there, we've got to join. So we know it's data connection is getting there. We know all the other address line connections and things, every other connection on there, are in parallel. Yeah, a quick clip added in at the end there. If you didn't follow the annotation there, what I was trying to explain, when I said, oh, that's the data uh, in data out pin, no, it's not. The reason the third pin down this side was not beeping anywhere, you know, they're not joined together, is because that's the data pin as well, they're joined together. See that? Yeah, the D pin and the Q pin are short. So that's another check you should do on each chip. Because if those were broken, you may find you know it's data in is connected to the CPU, but it's data out isn't. Yeah, so yeah, on each chip, those two pins will be joined on a 4164. It's got to be either these or something else could be affecting the data bus. But anyway, nevertheless, that's that one. And again, if we just go along, that's that one. That's that one. It's like every other one. So I mean, I'll, I can, yeah, let's go on. Let's just do the others. I've done those. Let's do the others, and then they ruled out the de in terms of data bits. It'd be easier just to assume because it's pointing to that one, we think the problem's here, but it could be somewhere else actually that's messing it up. Yeah, that's joined. That's joined. That's joined. That's joined. So the data bus on the RAM is connected to the CPU. That should be sufficient to not, you know, rule that out, really. But something else could be interfering with that. If we scope that data bit, the one it's on about, maybe this is interfering with it. Maybe the kernel is interfering with it, even though the kernel is disabled and it's able to actually switch to the dead test cart using the, uh, the the PLA there. Maybe it's still outputting one bit there. One of its data bits is still doing something. Or basic, or either of those. Either of these three chips here could be causing a data bus conflict. That might do it. 
but you see you, you could assume it's those at the moment so yeah i've got two different ways of looking at that i think the next thing to do really is probably scope it and see if we've got logic level issues somewhere either in relation to these if those look all right then uh, maybe we just well i think i might just look at the data bit first this one and compared to that one we see like a, a midway logic level or it's stuck totally low or stuck high we could test that with a logic probe actually i don't even need the scope do i let's do that I like to try and show things without using a scope because everyone's like, I ain't got a scope, I don't want to get a scope, I just want to understand how it works, do you know what I mean? So it's like, this is a simple cheap way of doing it, so that's pulsing, and that's pulsing, so yeah, from a logic level perspective, if there was, if it was stuck one way, I would see that here, so yeah, I think we're pointing to these actually. I mean, the signals there are weird. I don't know if I can establish that. If you compare back to previous videos, you see the same pulsing all the way down the side and all the way down the side. And this, we don't. This is the first time. This is the first time where, you know, I've gone like, oh, right, that's the that's the VCC, so that's correct. And then we've got a low. Why have we got a stuck low? We never see a stuck low here. I've never seen a stuck low there. Pulsing, yeah? Pulsing. Pulsing. Stuck high. Stuck high, uh, pulsing. So we've got a few lows and stuck highs and things there. Let's just check this one. Uh, that's the VCC supply. Low, just stuck like that one there. So those are both stuck low on the same bit. Pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. Stuck high, just the same as it was over here. That could be a clue. The the same pan, the exact same pan is happening on both chips there. So this is a mux, and what we know is it's like it's going to be toggling between one set of bits and the other on one side. You know, one side's going to be an input, one side's going to be a series of outputs, or vice versa. So the fact that we're seeing pulsing down that side there, but weird stuff on here where you've got stuck lows, stuck highs, that shouldn't be happening. You should be seeing some pulsing there because the stuff on this side is pulsing. So yeah, I think I need to remove both of those, socket those up, swap those out, and I bet that then springs to life. So you've seen me remove these things a million times before without the desolder station, but it's so hot in here today, I just want to get this done quickly. I want light work of this, so uh, yeah, we're going to go at it with the desolder station. I've got a smaller nozzle size on here, so I've marked these with a red dot, because you could easily think that resistor ray there is the start of one of the ICs. And we'll just get it on there, let it melt and remove it. Any pins you get stuck on, just add a bit of extra solder and flux. You could add flux on. It will make the whole process easier, but I'm just trying to avoid doing that really. It's just a waste of solder and a waste of flux. When you can see, they just free up really well, more often than not, without anything additional. I just add it if it gets stuck. Like that one's not really unblocking very well. These legs are very short, so that can make it a bit difficult. That one's all right. This one here is bent right over. I can see that. Oh, I don't like it when they're bent like that. That's so extreme. Because you've got to sort of come in at an angle to try and heat and lift, and then obviously, if you're not careful, a slip. There we go. That's one side done. But that's off, so we can clean up and get a socket. Have we got a pad missing there? I think we may have lost a pad there, actually. It's not used there by the looks of things. So I've got our socket in position. It's nice and straight. There was one pad missing there. I was a bit aggressive with it. 
uh, but it's no damage because it's a pad that's uh, it's the only one that's not used on the other side so it's okay yeah this is not going to fix it I don't think it might look out when it might but I think the other one's faulty I think both of these are all I'll do is get this on and I'll find a new 257 I'll go test it as is because then we can compare the two So, with a new 74 LS257, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, exactly the same! I think we'll swap the other one. Let's just see what we see down this side here. Stuck low again, actually. Pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. I'm seeing much better levels here, though. These are really visible, uh, like, difference between high and low. It was a bit weak before. So, yeah, other than that low there, which is exactly what we see over here, and that might be legit as part of what it's doing, I think it's that. And that relates to this bank here, doesn't it, I think? Or maybe it doesn't, actually. These do the address lines, don't they? So, anyway, I'm going to swap that one, and then we'll revisit. I've uh, reused uh, another socket that I've reclaimed here. Boy, it's uh, been retentioned and good as new. But this one is a single wipe. It'll be fine, though. That's going to make a really tight... Yeah, you can hear the pins going in. Really tight fit. Right, let's see what happens now. Are we going to get a difference or not? Well, without the dead test, we've still got a black screen, so I'm guessing five flashes. Let's get the dead test in. Two, oh, one, one, one. So maybe now it's RAM. Yeah, we do have a difference. That's the first time. Let's just try that a few times. That's the first time we've had a difference. One, one. That's good news. Now, I've spent about an hour trying to understand some really crazy behaviour. The screens keep going black, you know, so you'd have the flash, 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 there's a little bit black. And you're like, why is this only stopped? So you power cycle it, just black, nothing. And then I measured the 5 volts, nothing at all. I could smell something warming up. I was like, is it the power supply? It turns out it's the power saver. Yeah, it's cold now. I think what was happening here is, it's, it's up, my power supply was supposed to be like 5.31 volts when the, the situation now with the few chips missing. By the time you've got a SID on there, you've got another CIA and a keyboard connector and stuff, um, it's not an issue, but it's also very hot in here. So, I mean, like, once this is cooled down, if I switch this on now, it comes on and I get the flashes, no issues at all. But it took me blooming ages to work out that that was the issue. So, I'm adding this bit at the end, I didn't explain that very well. What was happening is uh, there was a black screen. Yeah, measured the voltage, the, the main 5 volts was missing. We had the 5 and the 12 from the, uh, you know, that go to the VIC, those were there, the, the ones on the two regulators on board, but the main 5 volts was missing. At the same time, I could smell something baking and unplug this, and this was really hot. And I was like, why is this hot? Has this failed? And because there were some chips missing off the board, quite a few, you know, two or three at least, and because it's hot in here, the power supply was just going marginally above the 5.35-ish volts before this kicks in and goes, oh, you've got an over-voltage, yeah? Uh, and I know that's the issue because I uh, later uh, had the same exact same problem again with another board, and when the board's fully populated, no issues at all. And the reason this was getting hot, the thing that could smell, was this... Um, because it was obviously cutting in and the MOSFET in there shorts the power to, it might be an SCR or something, I think shorts the power to ground. Which, why uh, this warms up. So yeah, that's that's all the issue was. Anyway, coming back to the job in hand. It, you will be screaming at the camera if you know the pinouts of these. I think what's going on here, we had a stuck low, didn't we, on the output enable. These are always output, I think. I think it's the AEC signal that comes to a buffer somewhere, an inverter. It's going to be one of these down here, is it an 06? So that's probably the issue with this board. That probably was the original fault with it before someone you know took everything off. I mean, that kind of fault could have killed the RAM, it could have killed these anyway. Um, we could obviously test the old chips once I've strained the legs and removed the solder. But the next thing I need to do is just uh, find which chip it is here and uh, just logic probe the input and the output. If the output's like stuck low and the input's pulsing, that's going to be the issue, actually. It's an interesting one because I've never seen that before, actually. Yeah, so it was whilst looking at the schematics going, oh my god, what could this possibly be? And I was like, well, let's check in here, hang on a minute. AC, output enable, pin 15. Oh, hang on a minute, pin 15 was low on both of them. <laughs> it's blatantly obvious. So I didn't need to necessarily take these off. It may have killed them by the fact that that was low all the time. I doubt it, though. So, yeah. I think what this is used for is uh, to share access between the VIC and the uh, CPU in terms of the RAM. I could be wrong. 
I think it's, it's that. I need to look at it more. You can see what it's like on the phone. I can't see the whole thing. That's the problem. Uh, but I think that's what that signal is used for. Yeah, AEC. Um, yeah, and obviously that AEC signal should be in sync with something else somewhere else so that the, the two aren't fighting. Yeah, so it's U87406. So, uh, yeah, this is off at the moment. Where's U8? Yeah, it's this one here. So, uh, I've got the logic probe. Let's just uh, switch it on. Right, dead test is flashing. We've got a ground there. So, it's a, an 06. It's an inverter, as I say. So, it's going to be input and then output. So, we've got high, hello. That's correct. Bilsin, and low. Hang on a minute, that's wrong. So, straight away, there's a problem. Pulsing, help in, a low. That's impossible. Low and a high, that's correct. Ground, ground the other way. So, yeah, surprisingly, it looks like that's the problem. High and a low, that's correct. Low and a high, that's correct. Low and a high, correct. So, it's uh, that gate there. That'll be exactly where it goes. Let's just, uh, just again, work out which pin it was. Uh, in a minute, it's logic probe come off. Yes, it has. So, it's pulsing low, wasn't it? Check it again. High, low, that's correct. Pulsing low. So pin four, switch it off. Just test on connectivity. We're going to find that is the output enable to the 257. Of course, you could have just looked it up and worked out the pin there, but I like to go round chip and go, oh yeah, there is a balked gate. And then just go, right, is it the one? And yes, it is. Yeah, it joins the setting pin down here. That's where we went low. And then we went, oh, there's a low again. Low is that. So I need a 7406. I'm not sure I have a spare 7406 actually may need to borrow one from one of the other boards I'm not sure if that's like an open collector um, or something like that I don't know it's, it's an unusual uh, number for me but we can take one from one of the other boards can't we we've got those two scrap boards so as you can see socketed up I took the 06 off one of those other boards I probably will order one of those and backfill on the other one because I think we can get the other bread bin board working it's the same rev as this one I think as well now we've got to hope that chip works, but uh, yeah, it'd be hmm, coincidental, wouldn't it, if they both had the same fault. Uh, so let's plug that in, switch that on, and let's see what happens this time. I'm hoping not a RAM fault. <laughs> we've still got a RAM fault, what is going on here? Yeah, so this is enough to drive you to despair. I know why this one was scrapped now, I feel that like bleeding scrap in it too. Right, let's, let's check that. Hang on. Why have we got no logic probe again? What is get? Oh, there we go. We just had a bad ground. Uh, let's just check uh, that second pin down. Still low. What the? Is there a pull down or a resist? There must be something else going on here, because yeah, there is. There's something else going on because it's still low. So I find it hard to believe that chips faulty on both of them. I need to look back at the schematics and see if there's a, a resistor because one of the resistors must be balked here and pulling it low or something else sits on that line that is capable of pulling it low. That might be the issue here. It could be could be some other 7.4 series round here maybe. Right, maybe you were all screaming at the camera. It's all starting to make sense now. See anything uh, suspicious around here at all? That's looking balked. That's been levered. You know, someone's when they've got the ram off here, they put a screwdriver there on. Ah, screw that resistor. And look, it's two halves. Look, there's one half. There's the other half. <laughs> That's the issue. So let's just see if that is the resistor. I bet it is because I've just been trying to find it. And I couldn't find it, and then I spotted that and thought that'll be the uh, problem. So it was the fourth pin here. That's where the AEC comes out of here. And I'm guessing it is like an open collector or something. This is where it's, it's going to be output low. You can't pull it high. It needs a pull up. And I bet that's what this is, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Oh, it is. There we go. It is. There we go. See that? Dead short. So it's this resistor. This is why it's stuck low. That uh, is just hard to believe. So this side, is this 5 volts then? Yeah, 5 volts is a pull up. There we go. So there we go. You learn something, I learn something. When you're looking at these, yeah, when you look at RAM fault, obviously check these. If you see a low on the AEC, you need to be looking at this, but check that resistor, just make sure someone's not shattered it in two like that. So, I don't know what size that is. For now, I'm just going to borrow the one off the other board, stick it on here, and fingers crossed, we get another fault. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping we get like a problem with a 4096 or a 373 or something, 
because this is kind of covered old ground that isn't and maybe those you know the two together but yeah so yeah let's hope we get another fault right AEC pull up resistor reinstated taken from that same uh, board you saw earlier you know the other bread bin fault faulty board there um, again I'll get one of those I don't know what size it is 150 ohm or something like that let's get the power and hopefully we'll have uh, some sort of graphical fault so dead test is dead testing it does take about 10 seconds when you get a solid black screen like that but the main thing is no white flashes I guess that means that's solved there we go woohoo how oh dear it works so let's just let that go through I mean the reality is with that then obviously I need to clean up the old 257s and test those but it might be that that resistor well we know that resistor will have been levered off shattered in two just by the RAM removal so was there ever actually a fault with the things that are left on this board I don't know I mean we've got a CIA thing down there that obviously there's one missing at the moment that's going to be the first issue there but we don't know about the other CIA that's already on board and uh, yeah so I think the next thing to do is I'll clean up uh, in fact I won't clean up yet I'll get the, the CIA on because then we can uh, load a few games and test it out get a SID on there and stuff and just see is it fully functional but yeah that was uh, a bit confusing to me that repair so like I say I started off thinking this was going to be easy and then it threw me off on the RAM I did spend 10 minutes you know doing the whole you know it says uh, swap chip one you know the number of flashes so it's like swap chip one now it's flashing a different number of times now it's chip three swap that one. Oh, now it's chip eight swap that one. Oh, it's chip six now and I was like no this is ridiculous I'm just going round and round and round um, and when you see that usually it's the two five sevens and that was the point where like I say I sort of gave up for a bit went and had some lunch looked at the schematics and as soon as I saw that output enable connection on two five seven uh, there and I remembered it was low I was like oh it's so simple it was such a simple fault or that just that resistor there really let's just unblock the uh, pin see if this is uh, CAA now there's a bit of solder there yeah I think and it's like it doesn't come out it doesn't matter how much you whack it you get a cotton bud, you've dipped it in IPA, the stalk has got been an IPA there, you push it into the silicon and you do that, you squeeze and rotate and then the IPA cleans the inside of the silicon where any flux is, where the flux is the issue that helps the solder stick. So there we go, got uh, another CIA there, yeah, uh, wrist strap uh, to fit that. We do have another fault actually, but again it's a fault you've seen before I think. So with the dead test, everything's checking out there. Now we've got the two CIAs, you see the timers down there, those represent the number of seconds it's been running. So they've both gone up to 36 as it went around that cycle, we'll just leave it going around again. You should see that increment in a minute. See that? 50 seconds now. So yeah, that's uh, okay from that perspective, but if it's switch it off, take the dead test out, switch it on, we should get basic. And what do we get? Yeah, another black screen. So logic dictates pretty much, I mean, technically there could be an issue with that, but in terms of the timekeeping, there's no issue there. And if it was creating a, uh, some sort of data bus conflict, we would have seen evidence of that in the you know the diagnostics cards are there, the dead test. So it's got to be the basic or the kernel. Um, it's a shame it's an R3 though as well. I think some of the spares have got are R2s. But anyway, I think uh, yeah, I'll inspect around there, make sure there's no trace damage or anything. But I'm going to assume. Uh, it looks like that could be a trace down there. That's a bit funny. Yeah, if it's not trace damage, it's going to be the kernel. Uh, so I'll just you know, if that's the case, I'll take it off, put a socket on there, and I'll come back in a minute perhaps when I've got the socket fitted. Uh, considering Occam's razor here, this was obviously damaged. There were three or four things I patched up, but everything looked all right around it. But it's safe to assume that maybe there's a connection not connected there. So just looking at the first eight connections on this ROM here, they should connect to the CPU. Yeah, hang on. I think there are address lines. Let's see if I can get on there. That's the first one. And you go down this way, up that way. So from that point, wherever that is there, that's one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anyway, you get the idea. So that's the first eight. And I was looking at that there, so it starts up there, A7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know there's got a CPU. But then you've got 9, 10, 11, 12, so I'll just test those, and that'll be the address bus ruled out. Then I'll test the data bus, just to make sure they're getting to the CPU as well. Uh, but the numbers are here, around the edges, you know, like, so for example, uh, D0 is, uh, says there it's a 9. There's 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 for the data bus on this. Right, kernel removed, and uh, socket it up. There is a chance this might not work, I did consider that a minute ago, um, because one of the things you have to, uh, well I think, I'm going off memory here, I think uh, the 139 may do some address decoding, uh, well it does address decoding, that's what it's for, but I mean is it just for the CIAs and the SID, or does the uh, kernel get its output enabled or chip select or something from there, so I've got the kernel from the ZIF board here, uh, face upwards, pin one to the top, I mean, switch it on. Let's see what happens this time. <laughs> if this doesn't work, I, I'm going to be really stressed, I think. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, had a balked kernel. So, the faults, the actual original fault with this board was the kernel. That's what it was. Um, I mean, there may have been other faults, because obviously loads of chips are removed, but the fact that this, the kernel was the only real thing we found, yeah? The resistor was because someone wrenched the RAM off, the traces were because the CPU was removed, and then everything else has just been reinstallation, really. We went on a red uh, herring, you know, wild goose chase kind of thing after the RAM, but the RAM wasn't the issue. So, anyway, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. Let's now get a uh, game cart in. Let me put the Kung Fu Flash in, if anything. Yeah, Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Is that working? Or do we have another fault? <laughs> we may have another fault here, because that's not doing anything, is it? Could be one of the CIA's balked. Switch it on again. Empire. Yeah, those dots there. Oh, there we go. Now it's loaded. Why did it load the first time? That is a bit strange. So that was intermittent. Anyway, let's have a SID. I guess it's going to have a nano swin SID or something. that has got a single wipe socket, that anyway. So, yeah, whatever way you look at it, I'm not too fussed about widening the pins there. I'll probably go out with a nano swin SID in it if I sell it. It may end up as a bear this in my collection. Now the interesting thing is it's just done exactly the same thing where it's frozen. So that is uh, interesting. Let's power cycle it. I bet it works. Maybe not. So, hmm, not really sure what's going on there. There's definitely something though that's causing it to be intermittent in terms of loading this particular game. It, it could of course just be the Kung Fu Flash making a bad connection here because those look really dirty, those cum sacks. So let's just, uh, I don't know, put it back in and see what happens now. Yeah, it worked first time then. So maybe it is just a dirty connection there. Because we need to test the keyboard, we need to test the serial and stuff, so. Yeah, perhaps do that shortly. Now we've got the proper diagnostics working, you can see we've got a problem. And the reason I knew that, or worked that out, is because games were actually really blooming weird. Like one minute something would load, then it wouldn't, then it would, then it wouldn't. So yeah, U23. So you can see I connected a keyboard up here. Uh, 21, 22, 23, it's that one, it's one of those NT ones, isn't it? Well, if you believe it, so let's take that out. Let's find another one. I'm not wearing the wrist strap just now. I could have just killed that anyway. Let's just see if that makes a difference. Hopefully that will pass. There is a possibility that this PLA is an issue with the RAM here. Now that's past luck. You may think, how would that be an issue? And it's just based on the fact that the PLA is right at the back there. It's a pretty uncommon board, I guess, these days. I mean, I've seen two of them in this video, but they are pretty rare, seemingly. Yeah, that seems all right now. So I'll test it with games and things again now, see if it's uh, any more robust. So still getting instabilities 
uh, you can see it's like a mysterious block up there and it's pointing to the same ram so yeah there's more going on with this and I think well it could be that PLA I've got another PLA let me try that but I think it's the timing on the PLA because the PLA on this board is near the top of the thing and uh, that can make a difference that can make a difference there could be a CIA problem as well see that's bomb look there could be a CIA problem as well what makes me think that is it keeps thinking the button's been held down see that goes to the menu look Start straight away on its own, so it just could be bad CIA. Right, so it's working at the moment, I'm going to remove that, clean that up in a minute, but let's just clean up with cotton buds. Now before I brush this area down uh, with the uh, swallow brush, I'm going to do the technique I've shown you before. You can literally use a piece of solid tape like this, just push over uh, where you've used uh, you know, uh, cotton buds that aren't lint free. So there is still something a bit intermittent somewhere. It could be that this is Vicky's getting really hot because it's super, super hot here. And uh, a minute ago the problem reoccurred where, like I said, I could switch it off and on, would load the title screen of uh, Ghosts and Goblins, and then you hit fire to start, and then it just comes and saying ready. Yeah. Well, what's going on? Switch it off and on, and the same thing happens. Switch it off, leave it for five, six seconds, press down on the Vic, switch it back on. It was all right. So yeah, it could be this over here because this was red hot. I got the original 257 back in there, after spending some time cleaning up the legs, straightening them up, making sure there's no solder on them because they will, bits of solder on a leg like this, on a, an old chip you've removed, will grip on the inside, it'll go underneath between the two pins and when you pull it out, pull the uh, socket apart. So, yeah, just bear that in mind. So, yeah, that's a good fit. They've got short legs, let's switch that on. There you go. So, the original 257s were fine. I think I'll just leave the original ones on there, to be honest. But uh, I do need to test it for a period of time and see if I can work out what that instability thing is. And whilst the slot has been uh, pretty thoroughly cleaned, 
had this unusual taking it out this way. I'm not used to doing it that way. Right? Yeah, you can see, you know, it's still a bit dirty in there. And obviously there's a solder plated contacts. Yeah, I'm out of a kitchen roll, <laughs> you know, paper towel. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, stick some of this uh, under there like that. Uh, some of this around here. And uh, let's just uh, have a go with this. This came off uh, at C64C, that power switch. Stick that in and out a number of times here. It's hard this way around, it's better if it's sideways on, because I'm pulling it all the way out, but nevertheless, that might just uh, do the job. Yeah, you want to ideally pull it most of the way out, push it back in like that. Uh, and let's just uh, give that a go, because you can just see how grey they are at the bottom. It could literally just be some connection there that is, uh, you know, effective. We don't need that there, now. we can get that out. Yeah, the strap is on. Manhandling this a bit there, shouldn't be doing. Right, I'll try it again for a period of time and report back to see if there's any more stable. Uh, but it's been on for, I don't know, three or four hours without an issue and then the problem restarted. Thought we'd got rid of it. And of course the other thing here, just thinking about this, could be this Vic socket. Because it is a single wipe socket. It's not had anything in this, there we go, for a long period of time. You can see that didn't exactly, uh, it wasn't hard to get out. Uh, and I see one or two black pins, so let's get some contact cleaner in there. And uh, yeah, just give that a try. I think I need to wait for that to evaporate now. I wouldn't power that on. Whatever you do, do wait for it all to evaporate. Yeah, so I'll leave that for 10 minutes or so and uh, I'll come back and we'll test it. And you know what? It's obvious, but contact cleaner in there as well because it's not just the uh, socket, is it? This thing has been never cleaned uh, I think since I got it from the whack at this thing sorry right let's give that a go yeah so seems to be working again but that's the bit that always works when you press fire here that works you usually hit start and it does this bit card flashes a little bit and then when the problems occur it just comes up saying ready at the basic screen but that has worked so yeah we'll just leave it a period of time and I will report back so here we are about, I don't know, an hour and a half after having, uh, you know, cleaned those things and reassembled that stuff. Well, not really reassembled it, just cleaned those connections. And it seems alright again. Bear in mind, it didn't have much of a downtime to cool down. The Vic chip is uh, red hot now, burnt hand on it. Yeah, there, I can barely, barely keep my hand on it. It is so hot. But that's what you get with the early Vicks, actually. This is one that I would definitely have a fan on if I was using it for a prolonged period of time. Anyway, it seems pretty stable to me. But you see, when you've got something like this where the uh, video chip on it gets so hot that you can't even touch it even when it's got heat sinks on, that just goes to show how um, it doesn't take much for that to be a problem when it is super hot weather today. It could just be the Vic overheated. It could be that simple. Oh, what were the thing is there? I don't want that. Is it gone? Yes, thank goodness for that. There we go. So, yeah, I did lose the life there. I had to cut that bit because uh, the door went. I actually prefer to do that because then you don't have to risk going all the way up to the top. An armory, yeah. Oh, so close. Oh yes, well, up to level 3, I'm on a roll, 
I like the music on this uh, level, the remix version. Go away! Ah. Oh. Oh. Well, there we go. I'm pretty sure that that's pretty solid and stable, to be honest. So, tested for hours and hours and hours over the space of a few weeks here now. Uh, yeah, it's rock solid stable, not hair there. So, it's got its own ESD bag. I uh, now have bags for all boards that I uh, use and keep, uh, you know, within storage and stuff here. Um, so, yeah, what was the actual fault? The kernel. And obviously someone wrenched that off, it was 1k, and uh, obviously I socketed a few things here, three things that didn't need to be socketed. I was on the tracks of thinking these were the faults, when they weren't, and uh, then I thought it was that, because I was following the issue, but didn't realise it was that resistor. And obviously there were some bulk traces here. Yes, it's got a number of single wipe sockets, it came from C64 motherboards, but it's been rock solid stable. Connectivity wise, fine, and you can see the solder points on the other side there. You can barely tell it's even been worked on. There's barely a mark on it. There's a little bit of flux there on those, but I cleaned off the flux around there. And uh, yeah, power switch didn't come out too bad. And we got a good join there. And the board is pretty pristine. You know, I marked it up. Uh, corrosion mostly came off that. You can see it looks a horrible colour, um, but I wiped over that with some uh, oil. Um, you know, it's, it's clean to touch, a little bit oily perhaps. But yeah, it's not going to rust, and inside the modulator that's fine, the modulator does work, everything works. The serial uh, port and everything works, tested all that sort of stuff with the SD2 IEC and the 1541 Ultimate, so the tape uh, port works and everything. So if you'd like to support the channel, please see the coffee, Patreon and merch links down below, you can get a t-shirt or a mug, those things just to help the channel keep going. Thank you ever so much to my patrons for supporting the channel, certainly over the last month or so, as uh, I've been a bit uh, thin on the ground with videos and things due to family things, house things, all sorts of things going on, and cat problems as well actually. So yeah, I hope you found the video interesting, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.